Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at another Teddy deck featured in the Cyphers Open. I figured if we'd just have a look at Teddy's lineup that was built for the Crucible format played out in the Cyphers Open. And I recently did a video about the Crucible format and how to build your lineup. And I think it'd be interested actually to see, you know, how did Teddy build his lineup? You know, some of the decisions that were made. So today we're actually going to take a look at Green Yellow Sacrifice. Now Teddy actually says uh, part of his Crucible format strategy was his ban, ban and burn decks, which made Green Yellow Sacrifice viable. Uh, Green Yellow Sacrifice doesn't do very good against burn and Mono Red Burn has been picking up, like I said last episode. Uh, but so you ban the burn and then the sack kind of gets through. Now, Frogify is not as popular as it used to be. Uh, Humble and Visions has definitely taken its place in terms of like premium removal when it comes to blue. And that does make Green Nail Sacrifice stronger, even though it got nerfed. We had a Bone Collector nerf and a Soul Eater nerf, but the archetype is still viable. Green Nail Sacrifice has always been a very strong tournament archetype. It may not be the best ladder, uh, but it definitely proves its worth when it comes to tournament and this was part of Teddy's overall lineup so last time we looked at the green rush and now we're looking at the green yellow sacrifice but two other decks that were in the lineup as well was yellow rush and blue yellow events so actually the split for Teddy's lineup was two control decks and two rush decks so Teddy was able to manage the mid-range tempo orientated decks with uh, either control or rush depending on what matchup felt most comfortable Teddy actually did mention in the description for his lineup that he brought two rush decks to counter greedy so it, greedy deck so if one rush deck got banned he still had another rush deck to use if needed for that specific matchup so a lot of thought went into this lineup. Uh, Blue Yellow Events uh, is a Teddy deck. Teddy invented uh, this version of the archetype and has been playing it for some time uh, so it's no surprise to see Blue Yellow Events in the lineup as well. It's a very strong deck and Teddy has done so well with it on ladder and in tournament in the past. Uh, so it's a it's an interesting lineup of two control, two rush. So just another type of lineup building that I did actually discuss in my video, which is like an archetype split, where you bring two different archetypes just to make sure that you can never get banned out of an archetype completely. So Teddy probably feels most comfortable playing Rush and Control. Although T uh, Teddy can play Tempo decks. I've seen him play Yellow Tempo. I've seen him play Blue Jump. Uh, so that is possible as well. But he just decided that this was a, a better lineup with Rush. And the, and the one thing uh, to note about Teddy, some of Teddy's decks is the inclusion of Destructive Volley in order to punish the Drake Rider because Yellow Flyers has really picked up in popularity recently. So been using, uh, he used a different build of Blue Yellow Events, which I'll cover in the next episode, which uses Sun Silk Fairy, which I haven't seen yet. I haven't even tried out a version with Sun Silk Fairy, so I'm pretty excited to give that a go. But also runs Destructive Volley. Now that's probably more of a, uh, more of a tournament tech, uh, but definitely viable if you are playing against a lot of Yellow Flyers. Right, so let's take Green Yellow Sack for a spin on the ladder. I still think it's a very good deck. I have been playing it a little bit and it's done pretty well for me so far. Uh, the nerf to Soul Eater is a little sad. The nerf to Bone Collector as well, but there's still strong cards. There's still cards that can snowball out of control if they're not checked early on. All right, guys, let's get to it. All right, guys, first match here. Still doing okay in God rank. We're, in, we're getting to top 25. It's actually a decent hand overall. Spirit of Rebirth to get that going early. Bone Collector to turn one Harvester. I think we just throw the Bloom Sprite here in hopes of finding something. Maybe the Sack, like a Demon Wrangler. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with the Bone Collector and the Spirit. You want to get these down early. The earlier these get rolling, the more difficult they are to deal with. I was playing in the game earlier and I had 4-4 four, four village elders in my head. I had three of them. Three of them. They were all 4-4s four and so my opponent was playing blue jump. And it's just like, my village elders were training with Triton Warriors. It was hilarious. Uh, but yeah, looking pretty good. We can just go for the uh, collection here. Uh, we can go forest and we could split off to this side if we want to. Depends what our opponent gets up to. It's going to be rush, so we are going to split off. The bone collectors are pretty strong against rush. Or they were at least. I don't know now, they don't have that one attack anymore. That might be a little difficult. Because how do I deal with this now? 
I guess I should have maybe played a shield maiden there. Oh, we get a spider. That's fine. So all is fine in the world, after all. And we can now give this some attack to work with next turn. It's always nice. We'll get a shield maiden down. Now I'd like to get the Spirit of Rebirth, but we can also play this into creatures. So we can set up creatures to attack and maybe die in the process. And we can play the Spirit of Rebirth when that situation comes up. So you don't necessarily have to play this immediately. It's just an option to get it down nice and early if you want it. Now... I'm a little afraid of Wind Soldier in this situation, so I think I'm just going to play another Bone Collector. I don't want this to die to a Wind Soldier. I'd rather this die to a Wind Soldier. This can really snowball. Uh, but this can also really snowball, but it doesn't have any attack anymore. If it, had, if it still had the one attack, I'd probably value it a little higher than this, because at least then it could potentially kill like a follower on its own or a monk on its own. Interesting, just gonna go for more deserts. I guess we just make another land and slap down a, a another bone collector. <laughs> All the bone collectors. Feels good, man. I guess we could move up and cover this desert. Get a spirit. Might as well. We're playing into Doomsday here. You know, I used to say in my old videos, should I play around Doomsday? I put some 15 Feria. If, if we do get Doomsday, at least this is going to become huge from the uh, Spirit of Rebirth. So I think that's fine. This is really difficult for my opponent now. Uh, these are just annoying. Like, they're just... I just have a lot of annoying creatures lurking. And my opponent might find it difficult to break through. Alright, yeah, we'll take a draw. That's fine, we'll pass. So I'm happy to play the waiting game, you know. Uh, my win conditions are in my deck, and my opponent eventually has to start clearing stuff, even with 18 Fairy as a rush deck. And uh, this will just empower the Soul Eaters in my deck, and I'll be absolutely fine. So, yeah, I'm happy to sit around. <laughs> I don't think my opponent has a really good idea of how to deal with this. Like, Flash Winds, this out of the way, Wind Soldier, my spirit. No, I'm gonna. Oh, right. See, so value in not powering up my bone collector in that situation. This it's empowered the spider, which is really nice. So we're seeing bone collectors getting eaten up first, which is absolutely fine. Uh, Spirit of Rebirth it can get a lot done. We still have this one. So this might hit, get hit by Choking Sands, but that's fine. That's four Feria for two Feria. I'll take it. It's a good trade off. Here we've just had six Feria for four Feria. Again, just a really good trade-off. Let's get you over here. We'll take a draw. We can start drawing cards. We're at that point now where we have the luxury of drawing cards. We can even chuck a Bloom Sprite down. Why not? So we're going to be grinding this out a little bit. We need to kind of wait uh, until our opponent starts killing stuff before I can drop the Soul Eater. So it's going to be a bit of a slow game for us in that respect. I think I just draw and pass again. Yeah, probably just draw and pass. I guess I could move this up. I don't really want to. I think we're fine. Our opponent's going to look for a way to get a, a hit in to trigger Kaleem's prayer. This is such a weird match, actually. I didn't expect it to play it like this. Yeah, that's fine, too. I guess we can play a Bloom Sprite here, just to block the collection off this well. And then I'm going to... Uh... Yeah, I think we'll just Forest here. Oh, I don't know, actually. I don't think we need to. Right? Yeah, let's take a draw. There we go. Okay, if I had drawn that instead of Wind Soldiers, I probably would have Forest there, moved, and they just played another Shield Mate. Sagittarius. That's fine. I'm just going to scoop, and there we go. So, like, like Yellow Rush can't really deal with that. It, it's really difficult because once you start setting up all these little creatures, especially, like, the current versions of Yellow Rush... Uh, they, they, they bigger, bigger bodies are like Shaitan Demon, 
and Zealous Crusader. That's about it, really. And then the rest of the creatures are little weenies that hit you. And Green Yellow Sacrifice is just very good at holding off Yellow Rush. It always has been. So if you are playing against Yellow Rush, I know last time, in the last episode when I played Green Rush, I was like, play Green Rush against Yellow Rush. Yeah, Green Yellow Sack's even better. <laughs> this deck is like the one of the worst matchups for Yellow Rush. But yeah, good game. Nice and easy for Green Yellow Sack to kick things off. Let's get on to another one. All right, guys, another match. Looking pretty good, shield mate, to kick things off. I think I'll keep a shield mate and just throw these two because I can play this turn two. And if I drew a bone collector instead, that'd be even better because I can just set up the bone collector nice and early. But now we can actually go for Eridan instead. Getting Eridan down and dead quickly is always beneficial. Like, don't be afraid to sack this with a Demon Wrangler to empower your entire deck. That's absolutely fine. But we're not going to go for Eridan just yet. I mean, we could. We could just get it down. I want to get a Desert here for Wind Soldier. Ah, uh, Wildenek. Uh... <laughs> Wildenek just having a message here. Oh, I can't give a. I can't even do a winky face. <laughs> no wink. No winky face allowed. Feels bad, man. But buff chat, Abracam. We need winky faces in our life. Gonna double neutral down. So this is gonna be an opportunity to play Eridan here. Which is even better because now the Eridan challenges this axe grinder as it comes down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build an island here. Uh, I split off in the last game because we were playing against Rush, but because we're playing against a mid-range deck, we can now just build an island of power-ups. Bit like uh, the old Blaze in the Blaze, sorry, the Emerald Salamander. I always get those two mixed up. The Emerald Salamander, you just want to build this little island so you can power them. They're very similar when you're playing against Green Yellow Sack as well. So we're going to go for a Flame Burst. Can't Horse Master, which is quite good. Nice. It's going to buff all these guys up. Feels good. And now the Wind Soldier can take care of this guy. Excellent. We can set up the Spirit of Rebirth so it gives some more power ups going forward. Now we could block off the progression here. I think that's fine. We can just build it here, but then our opponent can double neutral. At least we force a horse master play. So we play this. Stick it here. Get the spirit down. And then boom. Plus one. So nice. Getting the bloom sprite. Bloom sprite can now challenge an axe grinder, which is pretty good. So yeah, building this nice little safety island. Cypher's Wrath. Maybe Cypher's Wrath Axe Grinder? So you need to build the special land first in order to play the Horse Master. So we are going to safely be able to play this here. Now my hope is that we are able to find ourselves another Wind Soldier or potentially a Spider. But we didn't. Feels bad. Okay. So we are going to take the defensive land. Here. Bloom Sprite. Not that great, unfortunately. I guess we kind of have to just kill this. Unless I just create a wall. I could create a wall of stuff. <laughs> and just hope there isn't a Cypher's Wrath. But then it gives our opponent to... I guess our opponent is top decking, so that's fine. I guess I could do that. Oh, I, I'd have to, I'd have to play the elder. Maybe I don't mind the elder trading off here so much. So we do miss a Feria, but this is, this is to invest into the Spirit of Rebirth. So now that we're not playing this Bloom Sprite, we're forcing our opponent to have something a bit extra. So Cypher's Wrath is not good enough anymore. Now a Flame Burst is required, or maybe like a Bomb Slinger. And then we'll just get more value out of this. The more We want to get as much value as possible out of these guys. They're just so strong. 
Th these two dying is going to make this a 4-4. Four -four. It's pretty decent. And my opponent took a draw there, so no aggressive lands are going to be played. It's going to take the hit, get the two damage. Is that Cypher's Wrath? Potentially. There's no Raccoon Copter. There's no way for the Raccoon Copter to navigate around. Why so serious? Oh, Court Jester. Pretty cool. We kill a Bloom Sprite. Get a power up here. Tiki Totem. That's interesting. I guess we can play a Tiki Totem down. We need a desert for uh, Soul Eater. I guess we can just stick it here, right? Tiki Totem. I think I'm fine with preserving the life of the spirit. Like, I could take value here. Maybe I just do it anyway. I've gotten a lot out of this already. So I just go... Ah, so I'm playing in a Cypher's Wrath. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, this is still only two Feria. Maybe I don't care. But then I have to spider this, and I don't really want to spider it. So yeah, so let's do this. Let's see what we draw. Let's get some power up to a Bone Collector. And then we can play this as a 5-5, five five because of the Tiki Totem. And then we'll play the Bone Collector as well, because then if this gets Cypher's Wrath, we get a power up on the Bone Collector. So things are starting to look really good for us. Our creatures are, are, are currently out value in red at this point. Like, Grand Shake is pretty, like, pretty much the biggest creature that can come. Oh, Garadan, I guess, as well. Garadan and Grand Shake are the biggest threats that red have to offer me. Unless we're seeing stuff like Ogre Barbarian, which I doubt. So, yeah, this is, this is starting to look really good for us. So, let's take a draw. Oh, another spirit. That's amazing. That's just so good. Unbelievable. I don't want this to get bomb slingered. So I'm actually going to stick these here. That's a 5-5 five five as well, so even more durable. So I don't. Even, so if this one gets cleared, I'm going to get more power-ups anyway. It's fine. Everything's worked out. So what's coming in between the wells? Maybe Garadan? This Tiki Totem's paying off. A zero cost Tiki Totem is really good. Oh wow, it's an 8 8 Garadan of the Court Jester. We do get a power up. One goes here. Do have a spider. Okay. Let's move this up and around. Take the hit. Ruining is kind of nuts. This is, this is pretty good against red. <laughs> we can drop. Yeah, okay. We're, well, while we're building towards this, it's so good against red. There's no reason why we shouldn't. We're going to play this first for the Tiki Totem trigger. So this becomes a 6 6, and then we're going to Spider Garadan. Because there's no point giving this spider the Tiki Totem trigger because it's going to die anyway. It was an 8-3. So we've just built a 6-6 six, six shield, mate. Now this can challenge Ground Shakers. And then next turn we just forest again into uh, Farian Golem. And I think that's just game. Like I think Wild Neck already feels like it's game. We did get a well played. Like sometimes you don't even need Soul Eaters with Green Yellow Sacrifice. You just literally gr you just outvalue your opponent. A bit like uh, Beastmaster Green. Like It's very similar in that way. Uh, but the Green Arrow Sacrifice has the big finisher, uh, whereas Beastmaster Green doesn't really have that. Its finisher is just the full out value plan. Uh, you can probably consider Rune in a finisher in some ways, but yeah, GG's. <laughs> so yeah, just give, give Wildneck a GG's. Nice to see Court Jester being played. I, I love Court Jester. Such a cool card. I feel there's a lot you can do with it. Uh, but yeah, good game to you, Wild Neck. Hope you're watching.
Let's go on to our next one. All right, guys, going in again. This hand is pretty solid. Uh, we can go Bloom Sprite turn two, then we can Desert into Rebirth Wrangler on turn three, and we'll start getting some triggers off. So I'm going to keep this hand. I, I quite like it. I feel that probably Village Elder is better than Bloom Sprite, but I don't really want to risk a mulligan on it. So I'm pretty content here with just going for keeping the Bloom Sprite and having our first three turns figured out. Yep, another Bloom Sprite. So we are going to actually go forest here. I'd like building deserts on the wells for Wind Soldiers, but if I was to build a forest here, I would have to build a desert for Bloom Sprite to move on to. So I'm just going to go... Bloom Sprite. And then we can actually take Spirit of Rebirth now, in case this gets Soul Drained. So if our opponent wanted to Soul Drain this, we're going to get some value out of it. We'll get the, the card that comes from the last words. We'll also get plus one, plus one somewhere. Hopefully on the Demon Wrangler. An opponent is splitting off to the right side, which means Spirit of Rebirth is in a prime position. Going for that Choking Sands. That's fine. Like, that's free Fairy for four. I'll take it. No, I'd like to keep it, but... It's not essential. Oh, there he is, Cheeky Elder. All right, let's get Sack in. Let's see what we get from the Bloom Sprite. Hopefully just another Spirit Rebirth. It's an Oakland, that's pretty good. Yeah, all right, Oakland. We could stick Oakland down, or we could just stick another Bloom Sprite down just in case this gets soul drained. I guess we want Oakland to be fighting here so it dies. So let's keep, you know what, let's keep the Bloom Sprite in hand. Let's go for the Village Elder. And we'll save the Oak Limb for when we can sack it with either the Doomgate or Demon Wrangler. Or we play it in a more aggressive position. Oh, it's a lake. Interesting. Yeah, we're going to desert here for sure. Yeah, I guess that's fine. So now we have our Wind Soldier land. I would love this to be a forest and this to be a desert, but we, we kept a hand in which made us kind of do this land play. I'd rather just have forest, forest, desert, desert. I wasn't... I, di I didn't have an opportunity to build that island I was talking about. I'll, I'll start building it now because we split off. Our opponent went down the opposite side. Okay. So I think this deck is um, kind of like an angry creature-based deck. Interesting, okay. So now, we're gonna go Oaklin into Bloom Sprite. And the reason we're doing this is because we want the Oakland to die and power up the Bone Collector. Giving a Bone Collector plus 5 plus 5 against a deck like this, it's going to be really strong. Unless it's like Crystal Flower in the deck, but even then, my opponent's spending 4 Fairy to, to lock out my my Bone Collector. Well, actually, it represents a 4 Fairy creature with the Oakland trigger. I can finish this off with Wind Soldier as well, so I can even... I could even Forest here if I wanted to, and then I could play Bone Collector down, and then I can Wind Soldier and clear and get a trigger. I could even Forest here, play a bit more aggressive with the Bone Collector and Wind Soldier here and get two triggers, which I'm, I am considering now. I'm in a really good position for collection, you know, double collector on the, on the left hand side. I've got creatures to back him up in case he dies, good sack targets as well for when Doomgate shows up. So I'm I'm actually keen, I'm, I'm keen to play an aggro Bone Collector. When this Oakland gets cleared. I, I can't see a situation where this Oakland doesn't empower this. It would have to be a transform effect or a crystal flower. Oh, okay. Okay. Soul Pact Garadan? Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So the variants uh, paid off for us there. We did get the Bone Collector, but I guess I would have preferred this instead. This can jump. This is really, this is a, it's a very powerful turn. Huh. 
Huh, okay, I can... I can... I can deep with Stalker this. I could then sack it with Doomgate. Doomgate won't be in a great position. I'd have to play it here. But I guess it could defend at least. It could defend this tile. I think that's fine. Then we can play Kodama just as a defender. Yeah, so we'll see you. We'll go for Doomgate. Good to play Doomgate in this position. And yeah, maybe I maybe I just play Doomgate here and just I don't care. Like if it gets cleared, it gets cleared. It's just at this point, it's just protecting me. And then we'll go for Feral Kodama, I guess. And I just use the Wind Soldier and the Bone Collector to finish things off. As long as this lives, as long as this survives, I'm I'm pretty happy. This is just a this is just a bait. <laughs> it's just a distraction more than anything. Another spider is even better, I think, because if I draw a deep with stalker, I can stalker this instead and keep my wind soldier. Might land here, jump across, clear, run this into with Garadan with a piece of removal, maybe like a firebomb. It's hard to say what my opponent's options are. I'm pretty sure that my opponent's just considering, like, what does this represent in the long term? Like, if this doesn't get killed quickly, like, how how much will this snowball? That's always a big thing with Bone Collector. It's a card that snowballs. Garadan's getting out of dodge. Okay. That's interesting. Not quite what I was expecting. I think that's fine, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Oh, I missed a... So I either get a power-up or I get a Feria. I think in this case, I'd probably just go for the Feria. Play Spirit. Do I take a draw? I've got plus one here. Do I want that power-up? Or do I want the Feria? Maybe I take the power-up. Make this a 7-10. Demand a Garadan gets a little bit extra. If he, if he wants to get things going. Hmm. Right, we're going to play this. I think I'm happy to trade the power up here for Etheria. Oh, this can't collect, can it? Uh, oops. <laughs> That's how uh, often I play with Feral Kodama, guys. So it looks like I got a plus one anyway. Feels bad. That's good. So uh, a big misstep from me there. Uh, I missed out on a plus one, plus one. I wonder how relevant that's going to be. <laughs> See, even I make mistakes. Uh, playing with cards that I don't use very often. You're all probably screaming at the mountain. It doesn't collect Feria. Well, now I know. Now I know. All right, so Bone Collector can now move here. Wind Soldier's not that helpful. Let's take some draws. Let's, let's try and find some good stuff to work with. I can actually move this a bit more aggressive. And then sack here this way. To another bone collector. Now creation's a little scary, but I don't think this deck runs it. I'd be I'd be surprised if this deck ran creation. Now 
It also gives a bit of insurance on the 710. So say there's humbling visions now. I have a little bit of insurance. I get, I at least get a power up. And the reason I put the Demon Wrangler here instead of the Demon Wing is because I had a 4-2 Wind Soldier at that point. I did get another trigger from the the Spirit Rebirth here, but say it went here instead, I had like a guaranteed clear if this Demon Wrangler was to run into the Herald. Humble Visions, okay. This guy gets a power up. I was uh, hoping, I was hoping this would actually, because then I can kill the Garadan. It still has potential to gain a power up. Okay. Wasn't it? This is a spicy deck. Like I'm not. I'm never entirely sure what I'm gonna go up against. And now this actually protects Garadan from getting wind soldiered. Which is a little sad. Stick a draw. Eridan. Okay. Eridan's pretty good. Stick Eridan down. And Eridan will die and it will push this up to a 6-4. Potentially a 7-4. My, my goal is to one-shot the Garadan with the Wind Soldier. But now I've seen Colossus and I've now seen Herald, I'm a little afraid that my opponent might have too much meat. Too many big guys to challenge me. I need to pick up a Soul Eater pretty soon. We've seen a Humbling Visions now at least, so Humbling Visions is one out of the way. Uh, that means there's two more, so the, the quicker I draw my Soul Eaters, the better. This can, if this runs in here, I might just set up Village Elder to fight this. Hopefully uh, this moves here and then I can win Soldier up, double collect and clear Garadan. And then I can, uh, don't have to move the Demon Wrangler onto the spot to collect because Wind Soldier is going to do it for me. Is that a boat? Is that a tow ship? Oh, it's a, it's a wraith. Okay. Nice. Okay, so Bone Collector got some power-ups. I can now kill this with the Wind Soldier. That works out just fine. Oh, and I draw a spider as well on top of that. So how am I going to do this? I can run this in here, and I will gain... I'll do two damage, and this will gain a power-up. I then Wind Soldier and clear this. This gains another power-up, and it can finish this guy off. Then maybe, just maybe, the Spirit of Rebirth will be kind, and then give this... A power up. Let's play this first because we don't want the Demon Wrangler clear to uh, give any power up, uh, give a power up to this. So one. Feels good. All right. Kill this. This comes down. Should have drawn first. But you know what? I think I'll just take an aggro land here. This is for... This is So I could have drawn just for the Soul Eater. I don't think there was actually a better draw I could have gotten. Uh, but m mainly just for the Soul Eater. But instead I've taken the Desert just to guarantee that we have this straight path to the Orb when we do play the Soul Eater. And they're going to be huge at this point. We're going to have some really big Soul Eaters. 5-5 five, five Village Elder. A <laughs> 2 cost 5-5. Five, five. That's why I love this card. I've always loved this card. It just... Just snowballs so much if you can't check it. And I can just sap another bone collector. Like, this is 4 4 Faria currently for an 8 8 11 of stats. It's madness. <laughs> so we see a more defensive line. Oh, the beautiful sound. We all know, know what's coming now. 
The big, big salt liter. Eight. Oh, that's just lethal. That's a lethal salt liter. Feels good. Yeah, plus one. We're gonna just get Faria now. Move this down just in case there's a mobility trick. We know there are fanatics in the deck. So now just representing lethal with the soul leader. Even if this was to get Humlin Visions, it's still huge. It's still a massive creature. Forcing our opponent to stick something in front of their orb. But then I can go for ball control. I can just like maybe shimmy across, kill the tow ship, and have soul eater. For, still forcing a creature in this position. And if I draw another Soul Eater, I'm in an even better spot because I could just stick another Soul Eater down here and there's two of them to worry about. Does bring a Wraith. Going in between the wells. I would have actually moved here, personally, uh, but decided to block my collection there. To a mountain, okay. Collect, draw. So we do kill the double collector here, and then we just go for the another, another soul eater. So now this can shimmy across and hit this, and then this can go for lethal. Very difficult for my opponent to come back now. It's just inevitability, right? 20 live, 2 18, 18, so crazy mobility. Just, it's just not looking good. <laughs> it's looking really bad. I like this deck though, Salt. This deck's cool. Like it's, it's uh, it's very unique. I haven't seen anything like this. Like a tricolor, wave crash colossus. We've seen like ancient heralds, Garadan. We saw mobility tricks, axe grinders, dustbringer wraiths. So it kind of looks like a tricolor good stuff deck. Like, I would be curious to see what the build is. You know, Salt is at rank three, so has been climbing with this. Sticks another creature in front. <laughs> That's fair. I get it. Is he get another draw now? Just try and draw our last soul eater. Uh, no lethal yet. Right, because my wind soldier can't really get anywhere. But it is inevitable. One creature could probably be played here. Time of Legend creates something. Plus one. And there we have it. So game. Going to the green no sack again. Like Teddy said, still a good deck. It's just not as strong as it used to be, which is fine. Because it was a very strong deck before. The nerfs kind of just toned it down a bit. It gained new tools with the Rokoa and Shieldmates. A very good sack card. There's basically two sacks. Uh, because it spawns another creature. But good game there. Slowly climbing. Let's get on to another one. Alright guys. Another game going so well. Iridan and Spirit Rebirth? Could I be spoiled anymore? Let's keep let's keep this hand. I'm game. Like I can sack this. Which is fine. I can use the Demon Wrangler. And we have explore now, so we don't have to build like the weird lands like we did last time. We can get the deserts on the well spots. So I can just like start forest here, see which side my opponent goes down, and just switch sides immediately. Yeah, so now I can. So what I can do now is I can go for the uh, forest. And then I can explore. Get Eridan down. And then we pass. Now, I could play Rebirth. I guess I could just use this to clear. I think that's actually fine as well. So let's let's do that instead. I know I'm removing a power-up from this. Maybe that's not... Maybe I... Actually, maybe I do sack this and then I play Spirit. We might see like a, a Triton Warrior come down here. This could just be Dream Reaver. It's hard to say at this point. We do have an opportunity to kill this. 
if we go for the sack, we just miss a fit. Oh, we missed a fairy, so we won't be able to actually. So I'm going to wait because I want this spirit rebirth to get powered up so I can play it here. And then I'll go for the sack on this side. This, this is a free, this is a free two that's actually really relevant. Mystic Beast. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I get it. I understand. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, I, I get it. I, I, <laughs> if that's the only frog I find in the deck, I can grind this game out now and just... Uh, yeah, I can just grind this game out and there's no Frogifies for my Soul Eaters. Most blue decks run one Frogify these days. So I'm just... Uh, I'm just hoping that's the only Frogify. Maybe missed opportunities there. And getting the, uh, the Eridan off. Maybe I should have sacked it. Things could have gone differently this game, I guess. Oh... Oh, I only lose one desert at least. Yes, yeah, so that's good, but ooh, I don't like that. A double neutral round. It's not looking good, is it, guys? I guess I forest here. Play bone collector. Ah, oh, no. I need to play this first. Play this. Sack, sack this. This gets two power ups. And I can stick this in between these two. So it's gonna kill it's gonna kill two of my lands. But luckily it only killed one desert. So I can still build another desert and still be able to have access to Wind Soldier. These two will probably die at the hands of Beiru, which is fine. Unless that's another Frogify. Or maybe just a Humbling Visions. I might lose everything to Beiru actually. It's the price you have to pay sometimes. There's no uh, no Shaitan assassins in Sack anymore. Library. Is it gonna be humbling visions? Hmm. I guess it's fish. I don't. I don't see what else you would be thinking of playing here, unless it's like a Triton. Maybe like a Triton trainer on double collection spot. It's got to be visions. Yeah, it's definitely visions. Like, what else would it be? So Beiru gets to eat a lot of creatures, but I could draw something well, which will get a lot of power-ups. Works out just fine. Okay. All right, let's take a draw. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever had a free Spirit of Rebirth down in my life. Pretty cool. This is huge! <laughs> I've just made a I've just made a wave crash colossus out of a bloom sprite. <laughs> oh, these cats are so good. So so good. I would have liked to have made a desert there just to keep my land generation, but I want because I drew spirit, I wanted to play spirit to get more value. Yep. Figoro. Maybe I should have played spirit here. Beginning. Yeah, a bit of a misposition actually. I should have played Spirit here. Double library. Ugh. Ugh, that's gross. Ick. I don't want to deal with that. Another land for Dream Reavers of the future. So I'm not going to collect off this well. My spirits are just going to chill out. Hope for the best. 
take another... I wanted to take this land spot while I could, so my Wind Soul just can at least clear stuff. So if a Dream Reaver is to come down and this doesn't die, that's fine. So he's going to kill a Spirit. That's kind of inevitable, I guess. But I'm going to get a power-up. I'm actually going to get a lot of power-ups. So I'm going to get enough power-ups for Wind Soldier to be able to kill this guy. Unless he's enchanting this to clear my Bloom Sprite. And this Wind Soldier is going to be massive. Oh, Aurora, huh? Would you like some tea? Interesting. Okay. I kind of want to throw Wind Soldier at this. I want to keep my spirits. Yep, let's take a draw. Oh, Laird's pretty good. Well, it's pretty good. So I'm really, I'm really tempted to win soldier this now. And we'll, we can play layer down in a good position, which I feel is probably in the middle, just so it can kill a dream reaver. And then when this dies, we're gonna get two power ups in the bone collector. Then I can stick Bone Collector here. And then our Colossus can... <laughs> our Bloom Sprite Colossus can kill Figoro. And then these may kill my opponent for me. I may not actually have to do much. <laughs> I can just maybe build my last desert here, drop a Soul Eater, hope for the best. Is that another Toad? No, it was Colossus. Man, these blue decks are getting greedy. Colossus, I guess you run Dream Reaver. Like, I don't see why you wouldn't, but yeah, Leia can take care of that. And I'll get two power-ups on my Bone Collector and two power-ups into my hand. It's pretty good. Triton Warrior, protect this. Okay. Huh, okay. Doesn't want the Emperor's Command. Oh, I'm a Bone Collector. Feels good. Let's draw, hope I draw another creature. Yeah, that's great. All right. My question is, do I... I guess I can do this. So this gets two power-ups now. And we gave a power-up here. And then this gets a power-up. Oh! <laughs> oh man, this is this is like this is just misery. Ah oh, no, that was a that was I should that was a mistake. I should have played this here. Because then the uh, Shimmering Statue protects this from Ninja Toad. By creation. Yeah, we just wait. We just let our opponent deck out. Or we let the libraries, the, the knowledge, kill our opponent. Dream Reaver. Yeah, as expected. But that's fine. I think. We do need to get another desert down. We don't really have the luxury. Because if I if I don't play a land now, I may never get an opportunity to do it. So I can collect here. Let's just run into the... Oh, I guess I have to move this across to get the power up. So yeah, let's do this first. Okay. So we'll take we'll, we will take the last desert, just to make sure that we can use um, our good old friend. Well, the Soul Eater. Sorry, I'm thinking. Then do, does this die? And the answer is yes. Unfortunately. So we do this first, because then we get the triple triple here, yeah, and then we do this. 
five fives can't go wrong there. <laughs> now, if the if the if the if the spirit rebirths get killed, I'm not gonna get value. But I'm at a point now where I just need to play stuff. And there we go. Just the, the library is doing the work for me. I can just keep defending. Just keep putting creatures down, outlasting my opponent. Knowledge can be dangerous. It can be a problem. You don't want to have too much knowledge. Your brain will overload and you'll take damage. Ninja Toad. Does finally kill one of my friends, but now the Bone Collector's building up in power. Oh, it does finally kill both of them. I do miss a bit of value there, unfortunately, but is we're at a point now where I don't think it really matters. Because if I draw a Soul Eater, I'm in a pretty good spot. Because Soul Eater is going to be able to kill any Dream Reavers that come down. All the Ninja Toads are dead. Currently, two Bloom Sprites is enough to kill a Dream Reaver. Oh, Battle Toads. We know this creation in the deck, so we could see a creation. So will I win soldiers not bad here? Yeah, we'll take a draw. Yep, win soldiers pretty good. Because it just protects. It just protects us from one side at least. I would love to get this set up, but I don't really see the point. Let's like collect here. Maybe I don't want to. Maybe I just cover the lakes and pass. So now my opponent's on one card. I need to survive one turn. Radiance. Yep, gonna heal. Then maybe Dream Reaver, so like just a double whammy of problems coming down. Frogify, oh, takes another Frogify. Not what I was expecting. Gonna hit my shimmering statue. That's fine because I what I can do then is just block my opponent off. Go for a Colossus. Oh man. So we just need to survive a turn. Which I think is very doable. Where am I? <laughs> Where are my Soul Eaters? What are they doing with themselves? Come on. All right, so we have a clear on the Colossus at least. That's pretty good. We can just spider this. So we can just block here. And kill this guy. Firing Golem, that's not that useful. We can spider here. Set up the Doom Gate. Doom Gate, our friend. Wind Soldier. Five, six, seven, eight. So we actually have enough to kill Radiance next turn. Unless something goes horribly wrong. But I can't see it happening. Takes the draw. Takes two. Burns one. Takes two. Burns two. So dead next turn. Just has to win this turn. Not possible. <laughs> Creation Radiance. It's not enough. Definitely not enough. Right? Because it's gonna. He's taken two. So draw three damage. Burn two from library. Four damage. Burn two from library. Five damage. Too much damage. On the dance floor. Not even double radiance is enough to save our friend in this situation. So yeah, good game. Didn't even didn't draw the soul eater. Come on. Why are you doing this to me, game? Didn't even draw a soul eater. I wanted to. 
I still didn't draw one. Oh yes, there we go. There we go. Finally, Solita shows up. For all this time, we finally got a 25-25 Solita. Feels good, guys. So yeah, draws a card, takes three damage, hits library, takes four damage, takes library, boom. And we did draw the Soul Eater in the end, but yeah, we just too greedy on the knowledge there. No, setting up the double library. I think one. Li I think I think my opponents just went one library. Would have had a better chance of winning there. I wouldn't have been able to fend off like double radiance. But good game. No, I think if you're watching this, you might just hold off on those libraries. Uh, in the future. But yeah, good game. Let's get into our final match. Alright guys, let's wrap things up. Hopefully with a win. Not a bad hand. We get a turn one collector. Always good. Shield makes are nice as well. Nice and durable. So we can just go forest into a village elder. But this actually just gives away what we're playing. There's not many decks that run village elder. Green Yellow Sacrifice. It's pretty much the only one that does right now. But it's, it's pretty good because we can... Oh. Scratch that. That's not good at all. I never want to fight this card. Please draw a spider. Please draw a spider. Oh. I draw like a card. I can't help myself. Why or oh why do I draw like this? Why does the game love me so much? To give me the godlike draw. If he plays another one, though, I'm in the same miserable situation. Desert. Air Elemental. Okay. We have ourselves a game. I almost just lost the game to that silly card. I tell a lie. I do love myself a, a good old Flame Silk Fairy. You know me. I'm, I'm a fan of the fairies. Not my favorite fairy, though. I just, yeah, I, I, still, I still think Flower Silk is my favorite fairy, even after Shadow Silk was printed. Flower Silk's really good. I love Sun Silk as well. The, the Smork Fairy, we'll call it. All right, Soul Eater. We can take a, a defensive desert and go for our good old Doom Gate. So what we do is we play Doom Gate and then we sack this, this side. So we stick our double collector who can go up this way and then we sack this this side. Oh, Aridon. Hello. Sack you next turn. Give our give our deck a pump. Oh, this got frogified last game. <laughs> Didn't even need the frogify for the soul eaters because I never drew them. <laughs> Feels bad. Alright, Grimguard. Oh, Grimguard's awkward actually because this leaves behind a... Actually, no, it's, it's fine. We can just run this into it, sack the 1-1, one, one, move up, finish it off, move up, finish this off. So it actually works out okay. It just depends if another Grim Guard comes down. If another Grim Guard comes down, it's a bit more difficult. Soul packed into what? A Feria? Is it dus Duskbringer? Oh, no. I don't want to see that. That's not good. Ugh, that's gross. Please, Wind Soldier, where are you? I need a Wind Soldier in my life. If I get a Wind Soldier, I'm in a really good spot. Okay, maybe not really good. I'm in a decent spot. Because my opponent's just gonna gas then. It's very difficult to play another Scourge Flame. And this is actually a pretty good matchup for, for Red Yellow and Mono Red Burn decks. Because all my guys are tiny. And <laughs> just so easy to like to kill them off. Ah, oh, wow, okay. So I can still Wind Soldier this. I'm getting rid of you. Ugh. It's not good, is it? I can still take a win. No, I can't because this doesn't die. It's really unfortunate. I'm going to take a lot of damage. Worst thing is I can't even, I can't even Sully to this turn. It's miserable. 
Oh, this gets so much value here. Oh man, this is this is sad. It's ridiculous. The the value of this gets from just going here now and just clearing out this, leaving it on one life. I take free damage. So yeah, this is gonna be a loss, especially if this is just another Scourge Flame. Can even just hit my structure. Maybe Ostrogoth is the key. Nah, I'm not gonna beat Burn. You know, you're gonna run into some, you're gonna run into some bad matchups. This is this is really bad, especially like I said, if this is just another Scourge Flame. Yeah, it's just another Scourge Flame. Oh my goodness. Just ridiculous. I can't. I die if I kill these now. The bad matchup. It happens. What did you have in store for me, Bloom Sprite? A heal? Heal me? Another Bloom Sprite? You s another Seedlin? I don't want a Seedlin. <laughs> Give me a Runin's Guidance. Yep. Yep, yep. Ouch. So yeah, double Scourge Flame there, gonna close out this episode. It happens, like I said, it happens. I had a really good, you know, I went 4-1 today. All the way back down to 24, feels bad guys. But Green Arrow Sacrifice, still a really strong deck, really good. If you enjoy control decks, if you enjoy decks that grind out your opponent, you're definitely gonna love this deck. I feel this deck's really solid. The archetype isn't dead, it did get nerfed. It did get nerfed for Resurgence, but definitely not dead still a very solid deck to climb with that wraps up this episode i hope you guys enjoyed it we're taking a look at another teddy deck featuring the decks from his crucible lineup which took him to first place in the recent cyphers open so we're just taking a look at some of the decks that were played in competitive feria uh, but also seeing how vi much how viable they are on the ladder so far so good green rush did well and green yellow sacrifice did well so next we're gonna have blue yellow events featuring the sun silk fairies which is a version i haven't played before so i'm ex excited to try that out but very solid lineup from teddy going into that tournament you can see uh, that his ability and his deck building and his lineup decision uh, definitely had an effect on that event you know taking his first place spot and also ban and burn <laughs> it definitely worked out because our last game there red yellow burn destro destroyed us this is nothing we can do so if there's a lot of burn in your region of the ladder don't play this deck it will not work out for you but if you're not seeing a lot of burn very good take it for a spin see how you feel about it if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, drop a subscribe to keep up to date of when our content goes live. As I said, we're looking at Teddy's Crucible lineup this week. Uh, we took a look at Green Rush last episode. Be sure to check that out. Green Rush has not been viable in competitive theory for some time. It's taken first place in the first Cypher event. Awesome. Maybe Green Rush is on its return. Check it out. Very cool deck. Some very cool concepts around it as well. Uh, Haunted Willow and Tiki Piper making a 7-5 and a 1-1 one, one for 5 Feria. Good value. I like that. That's, that's a good rate. I'll take that every day. So until next time, guys, take care and I hope you enjoyed Teddy's Green Yellow Sacrifice.